here's the thing. Back in uh, 2019, when the world was a much different place and you could actually meet people, I went to Superbooth. It's a synth event in Germany, Berlin, or Berlin, Germany, I suppose. I met a lot of brand representatives, a lot of cool synth nerds, and yeah, it was just such a good time. So I remember this gentleman coming up to me and he's like, I'm uh, I'm working on something. It's, it's not a synth, but it's something for synths. Um, he didn't actually have a Swedish accent. He had more of a German one. So he came up to me, he talked about his little project and he said, you know, I'll be in touch. And time went on. Corona happened. And then suddenly I get this email out of nowhere like, hello, I'm Sven. We met. The thing I've been working on, it's finished. And I'm like, okay, um, wait, who are you again? This was quite some time ago. And then it's like, oh, it's that guy, you know, who had this, yeah, very mysterious idea. So we have a little phone call. He's super passionate about the stuff that he's been designing. He asks if he can send some stuff over for me to check out. So full disclosure, I said, send some stuff over. I can check it out, give some feedback, but I won't make a dedicated video on it. But here we are, because this is some really interesting stuff that I think you want to learn about. So He didn't actually send a potato peeler. Um, we've been to Ikea and um, just happened to put it here in the box. So Sven has worked with a lot of big companies and now he wanted to do something for himself. So he set out to solve a problem, which is that it's kind of hard when you stack a lot of synths on a table, especially when we do the whole Dallas thing. It easily gets kind of unergonomic, kind of annoying to reach stuff. So he wanted something sturdy, I think, and something modular and something where you could angle the stance. So he built his own little system. So I should probably open and assemble this one first here. This one is called the base module. So this is the one you need basically to start off. So as you can see here, this is all metal. It's very, very nicely made. Uh, has nice rubber feet. It actually don't slide around a lot. It's very, very sturdy. And you have these little knobs here that you screw on here on the side. So we have the base here that you can angle, so like this or anywhere down to this. So it's pretty nice. And then you just lock it into place. Now what I think is really good is that you buy a base and then you can buy a tray. So this is just called the VD120 synthesizer tray. And then you fasten it like so to the base. And this way, if you want to change out the synth that you have on a base, you could buy a different mounting tray and you don't have to buy like an entirely separate stand for it, which I think is kind of interesting. And just to show you here, this it doesn't bend, like this is properly made. You also get some very nice IKEA-like uh, instruction manuals here, which are, um, yeah, get my Swedish seal of approval. So this tray here is meant for a Moog. It even has small like rubber things here, uh, which is really nice. So you can put it like this. Very nice. I mean, come on, this is some serious engineering here. So we're gonna take off this little screw here, put it back and uh, it's gonna lock into place. So let me just fasten it, I suppose. Yeah, I guess so. So now it can't, well, it can tip over, but it can't like come loose, I suppose. Look at this, so we can put it in here. See how we have it, the stand for a Moog Subharmonicon or Mother 32. If you want like more stability, there's also this one here. These are some additional feeds that you can put on here under. Now let's say we want to put this like here, up in the air, <laughs> floating, and you want to put something in front. Now that's where this one here comes in, the elevation module. I can tell you that I wouldn't have made a video on, on a synth stand um, like this, like a small tabletop stand, if it wasn't quite good. And you can totally see that the guy, Sven, who makes these, designed them, he, um, he actually knows his stuff. It's very well made. I think it will be very practical for some of you. I know he posted to one of my synth groups, uh, the Simple Synthesizers group on Facebook, and I saw a lot of positive responses. I am so bad at uh, putting stuff together, like I am the worst. 
should see me the other day with my new IKEA table at home because I'm building a home studio at home again because a pro studio isn't enough. There we go. Let's put this in here. Okay. Very nice. Look at the angle you're getting here and you can put stuff in front of it. Like, I'm not all too worried that it will tip over um, from the way you actually interact with the scene. It's not like you're dragging it. But let's put on the foot as well and see kind of if it makes a difference or whatever. So when uh, Sven called me and talked to me about his invention, I actually told him that I thought that this would, yeah, this would be well received. Because it's actually very unique. Um, it, it sort of solves a problem, you know, you have a lot of gear, you want stuff elevated, but you also want to be able to angle it. So, I mean, look at this, look at this angle here. So put on the additional feet and yes, uh, it feels like, feels even better with the additional feet for, for something this large, if you want it in this steep kind of angle. Like, this is nice. So just to show you here, you can see, put something like this, for example. So let me angle the camera down a bit. Like, don't tell me that this isn't pretty cool. It definitely solves a problem for us hardware synth lovers. Just having the ability to have three things. You could have a keyboard here, you could have a second layer here, and a top one here. And it's, you can angle it. So, for example, I could just... And I'm not afraid that it's gonna fall off because it's actually fastened. So that's pretty cool. Now, this one here, uh, the microcosm, the effects unit, is sitting on on a tray. So this is just a general tray here. So I thought I'd end off with a little proof of concept here. So you can see here the prologue here in front and we have the subharmonicon on top of it or over it rather. And like look at the angle here. This is pretty cool. And if we move over to this end of the studio I'm gonna show you here how I'm using the other one I got. So here I have my little monitor controller and because these are sticking out, I can't have it flat on the keyboard. And as you can see here, the base is actually quite small. Let's see if I can get in there. So you can see that it doesn't take up much space compared to a lot of other stands, which is kind of cool. And let's take a quick look here at the Veridoc website. So here we have the base module. So it's 32 euros, which I think is very fairly priced. Elevation module. We have the extended foot, different synthesizer trays. And you can see beneath them, it says what kind of synth they're supposed to go well with. For example, one for the Volca here. And I'm pretty certain that Sven will make different trays and stands for different types of synths, depending on the feedback that he receives from you. So is this for you? Are you excited about it? Uh, is it not for you? Well, you let me know and let Sven know, give him feedback. I'm sure you'll be reading the comments. I'll make sure that he does not paid or sponsored to say anything good about this. I even told him that I wouldn't be making a video because I didn't think it was all that exciting at first, but then I got it and I thought this actually solves a problem. So I wanted to talk about it. Hope that's okay. Talk to you in another video.